Yeah, okay. Introduction to today's thing. 2018 Chevy Malibu. Two-wheel drive. 1.5 engine. Rear hub replacements. And headlight replacements. Um, well, headlight bulb. Zzz. Oh, and wiper replacement. I've already done the wiper. I'm not going to show you how to do that. If you can't do that and you're working on cars, you're an idiot. <laughs> um, I wasn't going to do this video because I've seen there's lots of them out there. But I figured maybe somebody on my channel might be interested. So, first thing to do is to walk down the length of the car and remove the rear wheel. This beastie here. And as per a lot of cars that... People put these wheel locks on. Um, I'm not a fan of them. And usually the driver has no clue where it is. So you end up having to search their car. And I don't like doing that because this is their car, not mine. However, the usual place is in the glove box and that's where it was with this car. So let's get the wheel off. Okay, um, just to let you know, the lug nuts are a 19 millimeter and conveniently so is the locking one with the special locking tool um, we now need to get the brake caliper off and take the rotor off that rotor is a t30 by the way right oops there um, and those are ooh, hang on uh, yeah these Okay, where's me? Where's me? Oh, hang on, it's playing silly buggers. My camera loves to do this to me. These nuts here, they are 15, 14 millimeter, top and bottom, both 14s. Um, it's a little tricky because, as per all car designers, they like to fuck with you and they're stupid. This bolt won't come all the way out, it'll hit this pipe. You know, they could have made that pipe a little further back. But oh no, that'd be too fucking simple, wouldn't it? Uh, they could have just put a little kink in the pipe. Uh, I just, uh, I fucking give up with these car designers. I know they do it deliberately, but it really pisses me off. Sorry. Um, this has also got the handbrake mechanism on it. Do be careful. You cannot push these pistons back with the G clamp, C clamp, whatever you want to call it. They are wind in because they have the handbrake mechanism on the caliper. You have to use the special wind in tool. So don't go thinking you can just crush it in. And you shouldn't need to. Once you get these bolts out, then the caliper will just pull off. So, you know, you don't really need to adjust it anyway. But if you were changing the pads and you wanted to get the uh, piston further back, you are going to need to use the wind in tool. So next job, get the uh, caliper off, get it out of the way, get the rotor off, get it out of the way, then take the caliper, um, I want to call it a cradle, I don't know what you want to call it, get that off, uh, that is an 18 millimeter on the nuts on the back of that, and conveniently 18 millimeter is also the size of the hub carrier, which has to come off, but we will be back before then. Okay, so uh, brake caliper, brake cradle, and rotor removed. Do not forget, if I can get it to show you. Hang on a second, I'm going to play with my camera. God damn it, musky. Do not forget to remove this um, ABS sensor here. It's a 10 millimeter. If you do not take it out, you're likely to break it. So take that out. Okay, hub assembly is out. Just wanted to show you here, this is the ABS sensor. And if that was still in there, you could damage it when you're putting in the new one. So make sure you get that out of the way. Um, this you will find gets full of dirt. That needs to be cleaned up. This has got some light grease in it. I will be doing the same, putting grease back in. Um, every one of these bolts I had to use heat on to melt the thread locker that they had used. It's tough yellow stuff. 
Um, also, do note, oh, where is the, where is it? There it is. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. Let me see. You see here? Thread lock lock locker has seeped through, causing uh, that to be uneven. So when I will clean this up, put it back on, and don't go crazy with this thread locker. And certainly do not use red. Right, next is to put it all back together once it's cleaned. Right, shield is back on, hub is back in. Got to put the uh, brake cradle, caliper cradle, 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 back on. Uh, and then put the caliper back on. The nuts, uh, bolts, sorry, for this are torqued to 74 foot-pounds. Don't forget that. Uh, the ones for the caliper, I just do fucking tight, and that works. Uh, but I will put blue Loctite on it. The hub ones had red Loctite. The caliper, uh, sorry, the carrier will have blue Loctite, and the caliper will have no Loctite. And that's it for the um, rear hub put it all back together simple nothing new that I can show you on this now let's get on and do the headlights okay uh, this is one thing I do that probably very few garages actually do I have copper crease copper crease or even copper grease I think that some places call it copper ease I put it on the studs and I put it on the surface here this is steel the wheel is aluminium, or aluminium, and uh, ooh, that's a bit much there. Um, they tend to bond, so I just put a light smear on. That way, we do not get a problem when trying to take the wheel off next time, or the lug nuts. Just thought I'd throw that one in. Now back onto the headlights. <sighs> Jeez, this guy won't go away. One last thing: when you get it back on the ground, torque the lug nuts to 95 foot pounds and as with everything in all of my videos you do what you want to do okay to change the headlight bulbs on this car on this side is very easy uh, down here turn the if I can do it there's a cover on the back you turn it oh, anti-clockwise and it comes put it to the side reach in grab the bulb turn it anti-clockwise or as you guys say counterclockwise and pull out <laughs> yeah okay pull out the bulb okay you just pull it out and it drops and it becomes fucking awkward okay uh, and there it is now uh, a little word of warning for you here. I'm manhandling this and I don't care. Why don't I care? Because we're taking these out and throwing them away. But, uh, you've got to squeeze the, oh, sorry. I can't, I can't really show you this, unfortunately, but I'll show you it when it's out. Give me a second here. Uh, my glasses would stop falling off. That'd be really fucking helpful. I will show you this when I get it out, I promise. Right. There is a, a, a tooth, a dog here. There is a plastic clip that comes over it and you just need to lift it up and push it back. Great, connections off. You can see this bulb is burnt a little and I guarantee that is because whoever put it in last touched this, like this. Which is not what you must do. Do not touch this glass. The grease on your hand causes the bulb to burn, like this is burnt here. Therefore the bulb will not last as long. So when I put the new one in, 
I will make sure I do not touch this. Now, should you be stupid enough to touch this, then you need to clean it with alcohol. You know, like a, a needle swab type alcohol thing that you know diabetics use, or worst case scenario, get some gin or something like that, put it in a cloth and wipe it. Alcohol, alcohol isoprol, something to clean off your filthy, disgusting grease which will make the bowl burn like this one has. And obviously, this is the easy side. I will show you the other side after I finish this side. I'll be back. Okay, before I show you how to get to the bulb on this side, I just want to throw these in. Yeah, rubber gloves. Now, not to be used when you're doing this, well, unless you just want to keep your hands clean, but before you put in the bulbs, which I said you mustn't touch, it is a good idea to put on a fresh pair of these rubber gloves. That way, should you inadvertently touch the glass, you will not have the nasty grease from your finger on the bulb. And also, as you do each one, before you put everything back, make sure the fucker works. The uh, driver's side not so bad, but this side, we have to remove the air box and get it out of the way. It's a real pain in the ass, another piece of classic fucked up idiot design. I'll get to it. Okay, let's get on with it. The two main tools you're gonna need, flat blade screwdriver and a Phillips without a metal filing on it. So let's see what I can get to do, to do, to do, to do. Let's try with this first. Clicky click. Now, this may or may not work. I have found that if you give it pressure in that direction before you push the clip down, and it works. Uh, those two, or holders, whatever you want to call them, are attached to the lid, so we should be okay with that. As I still have the flat blade in my hand, Undo this little beastie. In Teverus beastie. We in Teverus beastie. I think it was uh, Billy Connolly said that. Can't remember what it was from though. Right, next will be the Phillips screwdriver and you'll be undoing the Phillips screws. Hmm, that one's not big enough. I mean, it does it, but no, let's get the bigger one. That's what my wife said. So when she said that, I said, all right, I'll get excited. <laughs> Those were the days, my friend. Yeah. Who sung that song, huh? Who sung that song? Oh dear, every time I do something, my bloody phone says, hello, and quite often it's a customer, so I have to say hello back, which is not a terrible thing. Of course, it could be Catherine Zeta-Jones calling me again. I know she wants my body. Trouble is, I think she wants it for scientific research. <sighs> Sorry, I've got to finish unscrewing difference between a light bulb and a woman. You can unscrew a light bulb. Oh, all the old jokes are coming out now, folks. Now these screws up here, hopefully I'm not going to be proved wrong, oh, get out of the way, dead body, uh, that they stay attached to the cover. So let's see. I'll find out in a minute when I pick it up and they all fall on the fucking floor and I have to find them. Something's holding it. I've undone all the screws. So what is holding it? Oh, it's tabbed in at the front there. Okay. There we go. Whew. Okay, it looks like the screws stay in. That's good. There is the filter, which is fucking disgusting. 
Oh my God. I've never seen one that bad, or have I? Um, that's gotta be changed, or at least I've gotta clean it for him. I'll have to text him and see if he wants me to uh, change the air filter. Good God. Uh, but we need to get this box out. And I am led to believe that you just give it a good old American. In other words, a bloody good yank. <coughs> Maybe I can't. Sorry, there goes the phone again. Oh, there it goes. Ugh, and tip out all that crap. There's these plastic things on the bottom, which of course break. They're fucking awful. More fucking plastic shit. I hate it. Hate, hate, hate plastic on cars. So these are already broken. Somebody beat me to it. So when I put them back in, I'm gonna grease these up. And that's what you should do. That way at least some of them may survive. Now we can get to this nice and easy, can't we? God, these are always tight. I'm gonna put some dielectric grease on it. I did it on the other one and I forgot to mention it. Just rub a, a little dielectric grease around the seal. Just makes it so much easier. And there we are, there's the light bulb. Now see this is the tab. And you just pull that tab up, the bulb comes out in your hand. And again, this one's got the burn mark on it, where the person that put it in touched it. Now I'm gonna clean these up and put them back in the uh, packet that I've got the new bulbs in. Um, and then in an emergency, the customer at least has some spares. Good God. Oh, and the dielectric grease I'll put in these mounting uh, pieces. Oh dear. Yeah, it's a pity that is, that is so fucked up down there. Well, I can't fix it. I, yeah, all right. So, here I am. A little pair of rubber gloves on. Nice bulb. Let's get the baby on there. Make sure we put it on the right way. Click. Stick it in the hole. And lock it into position. <clears throat> they, they come out anti-clockwise or counterclockwise. And so they go in clockwise once you get your grooves lined up. I can't show you that, you're just gonna to have to believe me. And if you don't believe me, ain't that a fucking bitch? to line up because well for one thing you can't see what the fuck you're doing and once you get it a lot you pushed it in and then well, you don't need collapse locked there we are done now dielectric grease time and then we're done well we're not we're gonna make sure they work and then we're gonna push everything back Okay, I have now put the cap back in. I put some grease on it. Good to go. Got to grease these up now, these mounting points. And as I said, I use dielectric grease. It's good. It's good shit, man. Um, it does no harm. It makes things go in easier. Then at least these two, when they come out, they won't break already. The other one, unfortunately, is already broken. I'll still stick some grease on it just in case it helps it, but I really don't think it will. It's just one of those things, you know? Previous people have been here and uh, it breaks, it's plastic. I, I don't blame them, it just, it's one of those things, it fucking breaks. However, uh, just waiting for the customer to get back to me to say, 
Would you really like me to replace your disgusting filter? If he says no, I'll vacuum it off and put it back in, but that would be stupid.